Okay, welcome to this meeting of the county legislature, October meeting. We'll stand for the pledge. Legislator Kasselak, would you please pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation without doubt, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. 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 Thank Proclamations. I'm sorry, roll call. District 1, Legislative Suchanara. Present. District 2, Legislative Goldman. Present. District 3, Legislative Ethnicity. Present. District 4, Legislative Nazarene. Present. District 6, Legislative Gross. Present. District 7, Legislative Castellana. Present. District 8, Legislative Gross. Present. District 9, Legislative Right. District 5, Chairman Alabama. Here. Proclamations, National Fire Prevention League, legislative bills. Mr. Sutton, thank you. Director of Emergency Services, good to see you. This, uh, I have a proclamation here that the week of October 4th to the 10th is um, National Fire Prevention Week. And what's interesting about it is it came about from the Great Chicago Fire in uh, 1871. It killed 250 people, left 100,000 people homeless, destroyed more than 174,000 structures, and burned more than 2,000 acres. The fire began on October 8th, continued to do most of its damage on October 9th. So uh, this is that sort of stemmed from this, of that activity. Um, I, National Fire Prevention Week will be October 4th to the 10th, during which attention will be focused on promoting fire safety and prevention. Um, I wanted to read some of the specifics which I thought was interesting. The National Fire uh, Alarm Code requires a smoke alarm in every bedroom outside, outside each sleeping area and in every level of a home. Half of all U.S. home fires occur at night between the hours of 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. where people are most likely to be sleeping. Having a working smoke alarm in the, in the home cuts the uh, risk of dying in fire in half. Smoke alarms can make the difference between life and death in the fire by alerting people in time to escape safely but they need to be uh, installed in the, the best locations, the required locations, bedrooms, and they need to be working. Uh, the resolve is that the Putnam County Executive and the Putnam County Legislature, on behalf of all citizens of Putnam County, proclaim October 4th through October 10th, 2015, as National Fire Prevention Week in Putnam County, and remind all citizens of the dangers of the fire hazard. It's signed by uh, Mary Ellen Dell, County Executive, and Carl O'Banner, Chair of the Putnam County Legislature. Tony, thank you very much. Say something about the National Fire? Well, it, it, it's uh, very fitting that we take this time of the year and, and because we start to commit from our outside activities and spend more time inside. And it's very important that we're not in place with uh, safety. This is not one of those things where it can never happen to you because it absolutely can happen. It can happen because it's a dead battery and it's more warm and you can't get early morning. You know, we're moving into the holiday season, we're moving into First Halloween, you know, candles around the any any um, uh, costumes or any decorations are a bad idea. There's plenty of battery powered devices out there today to take the place of candles. Um, you know, and it, it just keeps where I'm going. You know, we'll be talking about safety when it comes to Thanksgiving and talking about you know um, um, how you cook your turkey outside and use protein devices. And then we'll move into the Christmas time when uh, there's a lot of decorations up outside and have uh, extension cords on the front and you know, loaded outlets and things like that. So it's, it's a lot of good common sense. We urge everybody to, to um, attend the open houses of the local fire departments because there's a lot of great information there, a lot of good suggestions, a lot of tips about how to plan for personal safety and home safety. Because it begins with the end, begins with the end. You know, the emergency services will be there eventually, but if you're not really prepared, you don't have a plan. Uh, you know, you have to evacuate your house real fast. Your kids should know where you're going to where you're going to huddle up and, and take a tent, so to speak. I have one critical question. This is this is O'Leary's cow. I I was thinking that as well. I don't know. I remember my mother telling me about this is O'Leary's cow in a barn, but we'll but. 
Um, yeah, the point is there have been many tragic fires in history that have, you know, spurred change. There was the Triangle of the Coast fire in New York City where a lot of um, young women were burned to death because the doors to the factory were changed and they couldn't get out. So that led to a lot of reform. It seems like we've always had a history of very tragic events that kind of catapulted us forward in terms of preparedness. So we don't want to repeat that. I think the family of Carmel was just a few years ago. Like that was. Okay. Thanks very much. Thank you. Okay. Our cyber proclamation is Freedom from the Workplace, Bullies Week, October 18th through the 24th. Whereas Putnam County government has an interest in promoting social and economic well being of its employees and citizens. Protected from abuse work environment should apply to every worker and not be limited to a legal protected class status based on race, color, gender, national origin, age, or disability. Now will therefore be resolved that Putnam County Executive and the Putnam County Legislature legislature to be a right to proclaim October 18th through the 24th, 2015, as freedom of workplace bullying week. Correspondence from the county auditor. We had one correction. I'm sorry, number four. Approval of the next one. Special meeting August 24th, 2014, and our regular meeting September 1st, 2015. With the motion to approve this in discussion. Or Correspondence from our county auditor. One correction. An erroneous contact application as per attached report. Protective Services Committee, Chairman Gross. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. On behalf of legislators um, Movement and Nasserino, I have uh, item 6A, which uh, the Commissioner of Bureau of Emergency Services has requested a fund transfer to cover the costs necessary to complete ongoing generator projects. This affects um, the generator, which will be a pump station at the Temple Best Shalom um, Temple over on Room 6 in Manhattan, and also um, the Newman Tower in Carmel will be affected by that. Those are the two particular costs that are um, uh, for this $32,000 uh, expense, and there's zero impact uh, this one. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, 6B is a local law to amend uh, the Putnam County Code regarding the sale and use of sparkling devices. We passed this um, last year uh, related to the 4th of July activities. This is just a change in the words, so it would be it would state it, or be, it would be permitted or between June 1st through July 5th and December 26th through January 2nd. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Okay, 6C is the approval of the application of your emergency services has material emergency preparedness plans. And this is basically, again, the handling of chemical activities, chemicals, and hazard, other hazardous materials. This home's uh, homeland security grant, there is a matching fund of $953.75. The grant um, actually from the um, homeland security is a $3,850 grant. Discussion? Aye. Health, Social, Economic, Education, and Environmental Committee, Chairwoman Susan Thank you very much. On behalf of Legislative Spokesman Magoo, I would like to move item number 6D, appro approval, organization of Delaware County Resolution Urgent State Representatives <coughs> to amend the New York State Electronic Equipment Recycling and Reuse Act. Public works. This is on the advice of Commissioner Beals because we don't feel that this law adequately addresses County Putnam County's needs for a convenient, accessible, and economically feasible method to collect and recycle the waste. Other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Physical Services Committee, on behalf of myself, legislators Castellano and Wright. 6D, approval of county attorney to bring legal proceedings, 9 Drew Lane, Room 1, Putnam County Veterans Residence, 
in the town of Carmel. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 6F, approval and support of extending the pilot index lump sum basis snow and ice agreement with New York State through June 30th, 2016. This is an agreement, uh, this is part of sharing, I guess, where we do some state roads and we get reimbursed for that. It just makes more sense in the next two so we're also in the same situation, just extending it into the years 2017-18. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Uh, 6G, again, support extending the pilot index on some basis snow and ice agreement with New York State till June 30th. 2017. All in favor? Aye. And the third one, 6H. Same thing, extending the same agreement to 2030, 2018. Sorry, June 30, 2018. All in favor? Aye. 6I, approval, pursue, amendment, watershed, agricultural conservation easement, Tilly Forster Farm. You know, we have a lot working in the farm right now. And we suggested that we look at the conservation easement and come up with information where we'd like to go to make it an even better easement that is appropriate for us, what we're supposed to do into the future. Discussion? Yes. Um, I will give you all voting against this. We had a discussion at committee about specificity in the resolution, and it's pretty vague. And also, this is uh, to make the easement in compliance with what already has taken place at the farm. And to me, this is in reverse. And also, it seems that the intention of the administration is to go from a farm complex to a campus complex, which I don't support. So I'll be voting down. Okay. Uh, just to address that, um, what we've done so far, there's been discussions and adjustments to the easement. And it seems obvious that this would be a good time to revisit all our future plans for the farm. And it would be a good time to have a discussion so that we can make sure that this conservation easement it does what it's intended and it has its, it's in the best interest of the county residents. Legislator Scutchamore. I agree with this also. I think piecemealing this would be a detriment. I think looking at a major plan is a better way to approach it. And then we know where we're going, what we have to do, and what we can't do. And the big key to this is, this is only for discussion and ideas, and before anything is approved, it has to come before this legislature, so no changes will be made until we review it in detail. Mr. Chair, uh, yes. respond to that. Well, changes have been made, and that's why the council came back and said, you have to amend the easement, so let's be accurate on what we're saying. And also, uh, we have no definitive plans. The plans from the county are still in draft form, we still haven't been told how we can make back the two and a half million dollars that have been invested there. And that's why uh, the administration had to take seven point six million dollars from the general fund to make up for the gap. So um, I want to make sure we go on record that uh, this is to uh, make sure that this easement is in compliance with what already has taken place. Thank you. Yeah, I don't believe that's accurate. Um, is that yeah. This is to review the easement going forward. No changes are made. Anything that has been done until yeah. now has been done with the, de with, with the WAC agreement. And um, it just seems very logical now that we're revitalizing the farm to really look at this and spend a lot of time and get it done right. And I think it's a good idea to look at it. Again, any changes will be approved by this legislature. So it gives us an opportunity to discuss it in detail and do things the right way. So I'll, I'll make a motion to move this forward as roll call. That's not true. Listen. It is true. No. We're, and we're the look at meeting, it now. I'll ask on the record, I'd like to see the approval from this watershed council for all the changes that are taking place I haven't seen any issues with it till now, so we can, we can make statements, but I haven't seen anything come before me that there was an issue. Yeah, because we didn't know that the administration was yeah. having yeah. dialogue with the yeah. council until now. All right. Now. Let's have a roll call on this, but no one else has seen anything to that effect. Okay, thank you. Let's have a roll call vote. Legislator Edmondson. Yes. Legislator Castellano. Yes. Legislator Golden. Yes. Legislator Gross. Yes. Legislator LeBou. No. Legislator Nesby. Yes. Legislator Switchman. Yes. Legislator Wright. Chairman Alabama. Yes. 
Six J ratification sale of certain county properties to continuous owners pursuant to Chapter Thirty One of the Putnam County Code. Discussion. I'm sorry. A motion to accept the additional six J. Second. All favor. Aye. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. Discussion. Six J. Yeah. What is the change? No, uh, they deleted one property that they thought might be of interest with regard to the towers. Thank you. Yeah, which is meant to have one property deleted. Any other discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 6K, approval, recommendation, initial offer amount of certain properties to be sold utilizing the real estate brokers and MLS pursuant to Pursuant to a resolution 101 of 2015. This is going along with what we've been doing in the past to try to get the proper amount for the properties for taxes and uh, to make the county whole. And these are additional properties to be offered. Discussion? All in favor? No. Okay. Roll call vote? Or no. One no? Thank you. 6L, approval license agreement, the Emberry Vet Center, outstation for Putnam County veterans. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Rules, enactments, and intergovernmental relations committee. Chairwoman Adam Zell. On behalf of legislators, Ruben and Scuchamara, 6M is the approval of workers' compensation settlement. Discussion? All in favor? Aye, aye, aye. 6N is the approval of the local watchman Men section 55-2 of chapter 55 of the Code of Putnam County entitled Ethics, Code of, and Financial Disclosure. This is discussion that we had at the April meeting. And it goes on to actually 6 L also, approval of local watchman Men. 55-7 of the Code of Putnam County entitled Annual Disclosure Statements. So at the April meeting, we discussed amending the Code of Ethics that requires members of advisory boards, which are not paid positions, to file financial disclosure statements. We are revising the requirement that a member of an advisory board must file a financial disclosure statement and emphasizing that the board member has no authority to implement the decisions of the board and can therefore be exempt from the requirement to file financial disclosure statements. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Audit and Administration Committee, Mr. Chairman Castellano. Need to vote on both resolutions? All right, so we'll start with the first one. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Second one? Six. Oh, so six out. It's 55 mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Audit Administration Committee, <coughs> Chair, Chairman Gascalano. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. On behalf of the Senate, I'm going to ask you to vote for the following. Item 6P is approval of fund transfer to the Sheriff's Department for a K-9 stipend. That's the amount of $5,600. And we'd like to make a motion to accept the additional. Are there any additional six? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And 6P. A discussion? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Yes. Um, just to clarify, we had a discussion earlier today. There's no loss of vote control. The Bloodhound will be traveling daily with an officer, and there's a vehicle already in place to take care of that. Okay? So he's, he's available to the other counties if they need it. So it's a, it's, it's a good situation for the uh, county of the dog, as the, uh, as the resolution talks about, with some gift. So. And I, I just like to say that I, I think the Bloodhound has, I've seen on TV different things that I've read, they have just tremendous capabilities. And, you know, look at the people that are lost and, and things related to that um, has the potential to do some great things in the future. Okay, any other discussion? Yes. I would be voting yes for this um, in committee. I voted no 
only because some legislators had some outstanding questions, which were addressed to Gerald Smith's memo, so I am supportive of this. Thank you. All in favor? One down. Aye. 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 Six Qs, including the first chair member for the planning department, least transportation, uh, same amount of forty-five thousand dollars that's coming out of contingency to uh, cover the costs uh, for that lease uh, busing. Discussion. 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 Yeah. Regarding now on this, <coughs> the total amount. So far, is $105,000, and the reason why I'm going to be voting no is um, I'm not sure if this is even legal providing services for a certain group of people and not providing the same services for everyone else. And this came up during uh, the rules meeting uh, regarding um, we had a constituent that came forward and asked for a fee to be waived for people who are over 65 years of age. And we had received a legal opinion from the law department saying that we would be unable to do that because it was discriminatory. So I'm not quite sure how we're providing a service for one class of people and denying other people transportation that would like to be picked up for various um, disabilities from their home. So I'd like to get a legal opinion on this. I'll be voting now. Let's just kind of switch them on. I think it's comparing apples to oranges right now. This is forty-five thousand dollars, and if we do not approve this, this stops the veterans' transportation cold. I don't think we can do that to the veterans. I think if anybody deserves transportation, it is our veterans. They are working on um, a volunteer program that will alleviate some of this expense, and I certainly want this to go forward. As far as I think, Dean, you're talking about the paratransit. That's very difficult to change right now. That's a federal law that you can't pick up people within a quarter of a mile of a bus route. <coughs> Phillipstown doesn't even have a bus, so we don't even think we can do paratransit. But I think instead of pointing the finger at people for doing something wrong, get the legal opinion, but let's lobby the federal government. If we want them to pick up more paratransit people at a further distance, let's do something about it that way. To the chair? Yes. Um, actually, I'm not comparing apples and oranges. I'm comparing apples and apples. Uh, if you would know, um, Mrs. Scuchamara, Mrs. Scuchamara, that uh, they do something that's called on-call service, and they pick up people on a daily basis outside of the three-quarter mile so um, again, we're providing a service for a certain class of people, and we don't have veterans. This was brought up at the beginning of the year at the state of the county, um, when the county executive asked for veterans. Right now, uh, the person that is picking up the veterans happens to be the brother of the commissioner of transportation. There are no volunteers. That's why we're up to $105,000 for the service. So maybe you should get your facts straight. Okay. Um, Thank you. We don't need that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I just want to support what the legislator Scuchamara said. That this is also an increasing demand of the need for veteran support, and the bus is equipped to handle veterans who have a number of physical disabilities. So it's important. Right. Let's not have a discussion. We're, we're talking we're about veterans. The veterans are having a discussion. We talk one person at a time. Legislator Gross. This is a veterans bus primarily for veterans. It can be used other times if there's no need for veterans, but it was designated for veterans and for their physical disabilities. So I think it's a special situation related to the whole overview of transportation. Mr. Chair. Legislator. I would I would support this too. This is to transport out of veterans to give service to to us and protecting our freedom. Um, these are Disabled vets, for the most part, who don't have the means, so possibly physically or from a monetary perspective, to get to their doctor's appointments. And I think this is the least we can do to give back. I tend to doubt that there's anything illegal about it or it wouldn't be incorporated in the first place. So I, I would question that. Um, but I think it's the least we can do. I would just like to add to Legislative Mr. Mara, that's me, you know, Legislative Gross. There's no questions for our veterans. I absolutely have no problem with this. If there's something we're missing or should we should be doing somewhere else, let's look at that. 
this is for our veterans. Um, I, I don't know what else I could say. There's no questions in my mind. Okay, I guess roll call vote. Legislative Castellano. Yes. Legislative Castellano. Yes. Legislative Goldman. Yes. Legislative Gross. Yes. Legislative LeBeau. No. Legislative Nazarene. Yes. Legislative Scutcher. Yes. Legislative Wright. Chairman Alabama. Yes. Okay. Item six hours of approval of the budgetary transfer. The Commission of Finance for Social Order refunds. Uh, the current uh, books and pay out hundred thousand dollars in refunds to uh, an individual for some parcels. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Six S. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Six years ago, <coughs> uh, for the Sheriff's Department reduced any cash funds for corrections divisions and the Sheriff's Department um, just came to light that they didn't need as much petty cash as they had in the past, uh, so it's a reduction in that petty cash and they have to put this in front of the legislation for approval. Uh, certainly seems to be a first straight vote. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. 6D is the approval uh, to accept direct care worker program appropriations <coughs> to be used solely for salary and salary related fringe benefits increases for direct care workers and direct staff professionals. Discussion? All in favor? Okay. Other business? Thank you. Other business? Recognition of the public. Actually, not for sure. Right. Public. In other words, yes. um, the resolution regarding the ethics file and the financial disclosure file for board members, our department has three volunteer boards of 27 members. Um, so, in my to understand, they do not need to file. Because it's currently, like I just filed mine, you filed a line, and then whatever it was. Is this for 2016? You know, Clement. Okay, good. Clement, would you like to comment on that? If it's for next year, and it's uh, discretionary to for the records, so they are going to issue a waiver and then request for our uh, general meeting. So it hasn't been resolved. So the department would be hearing from the Department of Ethics? For the Bureau of Ethics and the Board of Ethics. The uh, uh, case record by January 1 sends the uh, legislature his recommendations as we should file, we should not file. Okay. And then uh, organization meeting, we adopt the change Okay. So we'll hear more on this as that. Yes. To be continued. Yes. Okay. Chairman of the Department of BSS and I'd like to thank the legislature on behalf of our board uh, for passing the resolution concerning the uh, disclosure. That was the one bone of contention amongst the board members. They said, we're volunteers, we do give up our time, you know, why does the county, why do people have to know our business? So again, thank you. Thank you. Recognition of the legislators. Anyone? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, this is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, a reminder to uh, get checked. And, um, you know, people are wearing pink. Uh, NFL, if you watch the games, they have pink socks and uh, pink shoes on some of them and so forth. And I would just add that males also can get breast cancer. You may remember Senator Philip Hart of Michigan who passed away with breast cancer. There's a building on Washington named after him. This goes back probably 20 years ago. But to get checked and stay on top of this, because it is a critical issue, and as you start to talk to people, Breast cancer is almost an epidemic. Thank you. Okay. Well, Halloween's coming up, so everyone be safe. Be careful driving at night. Watch out for the kids. 
And uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second.